Today's project, Retina Tele Zenar F4 135mm lens. This is for a Retina Reflex S, Reflex 3, Reflex 4, Retina 3S rangefinder camera, or indeed an Instamatic Reflex, but probably no one's interested in that. This lens is here for service. I thought I'd give you a quick uh, breakdown on how, about, how you go about taking this thing apart. Right, the first thing you need to know is that the front of the lens unscrews from the body but to achieve that you have to first rack the focus out to the closest focus distance which helpfully exposes three tiny screws around here. So just back those off a turn or so Turn and a half perhaps and then you can unscrew the front uh, section of the lens. So here we have the front section of the lens. It's the locking collar that uh, locks this thing in place. You can see a glass, a glass element here and glass elements at the front. Pop that to one side for a bit. Look at the body of the lens. The kit, and I'm unscrewing that rear group. This one actually wasn't even tight. Normally I would use a friction tool to unscrew that. It does have two tiny pinholes in there that you could use to engage a tool, a stiff pair of pliers, something along those lines, but a friction tool like this is much more desirable because it doesn't scratch anything. So here we have the body of the lens and servicing it from here on in is very much like servicing the other uh, decal lenses of the period. The brass lens capsule here that holds the lens is held into place into the mount with three screws around the outside. We'll get those loose. Screws and washers. These screws and washers, if they they clamp the front of the lens helical tube here to these focus scale ring and so you can use that to adjust your focus. So we'll just remove those screws and washers completely and pop them to one side. One day I will learn to prepare for my videos so that I have all the tools at hand. One day is not today obviously. Alright, so that's all done. That lens capsule should just push out now, the brass capsule. So here we have the brass capsule. The lens screws into this. Here is the, this ring here is the outer part of the focusing mechanism. That can come off. Multi-start thread, sticky old grease, usual stuff. At the back we see the diaphragm here and I'm looking at the state of that. There's five positions there but there's probably actually uh, ten blades in there. They've got multiple sections on these typically. Um, they're quite delicate. I suggest you don't take that apart. If there's a problem with it, uh, swab it very carefully with uh, the likes of naphtha. Um, if the blades are stuck together either because of the oil on them or because of naphtha. Do not force them, you'll end up damaging something. So that's our lens capsule, that's, that's fairly easy. Back to the body itself. So here, the way in, four screws at the back. One of them here is painted red. It's painted red next to that alignment dot there. It's uh, 
a handy thing to do. It's very hard to see that alignment dot sometimes. These screws are rather tight. That's all to the good. And these screws are longer than the ones that held the at the front of the lens. And now we can lay the pieces out. Now I'll lift these off in order so we have the lens mount. The lens mount here contains a little brass a wedge in here for all practical purposes. That's a cam that works the rangefinder on a Retina 3S camera. That's the first piece. The second piece is this ring which couples to the camera. Third piece is this shim. Usually these are helpfully grey on one side and brass on the other so you don't mix them up. This one isn't so I'm being very careful to put it down in the orientation it came off. Our first, our other control lever, I'm lifting that off. This has a spring here and the spring is attached to the post at that point. There are two springs in here. The thicker one goes on this ring, the control ring underneath that we have the depth of field pointer one of them so lift that out under that there's a little nylon in this case cam piece that that coupled to lift that out as other depth of field pointer Oh, now we've got a spacer in here first. Let's get that out. That's separator. That stops the two uh, depth of field pointers rubbing on each other effectively. And this depth of field pointer, I'm just going to unhook the spring from that. This is the finer of the two springs. Now it's very easily damaged. Now be very careful with that. If you damage it, it doesn't want to move smoothly and the mechanism won't move smoothly. See if I can lift out this depth of field pointer which is being reluctant. There we go. That's the other depth of field pointer. You can tell this one it's got a tiny little hook on it that that spring couples to. And now we're down to the uh, to the focusing part. This is where you this should move smoothly in here. All it does is rotate. It's got a stop in there that, that uh, limits its travel of course, but all it does is rotate in that motion. We've got four brass clamp plates down there that hold this plastic piece in here. That plastic piece is the wedge that holds these two pieces together. I'm going to slacken off Three of those screws. This one is the post that the spring's on. I'm going to leave that alone. I can probably get away with leaving that alone. I'll remove these other screws. Lift out those little brackets, those brass brackets and their screws. Now I'm already down one screw, what have I done with it? Oh, I can't see it, it's got to be here, so there it is. Alright, these tiny brass brackets. They have a little groove, or they're a recess on one side, they're cut away. Now where that relief is, that's the edge that catches over this plastic piece here. Now, I should be able to pull back this plastic piece on both sides. 
and now I can release the lens or the front part of this mount and all I'm interested in here is cleaning this you can see possibly it's quite dark in here that's just dried out grease originally it would have had some graphite grease it's dried out over time that's all and I want to clean all this mount here get rid of all that old grease and all the embedded dust and so forth and I'm just going to use naphtha on a cotton bud to do that I suggest you don't use anything more aggressive than naphtha because I would be concerned about damage to this plastic piece here naphtha will probably be fine with that if it isn't I'm going to be in deep trouble we shall find out but, naf but uh, anything else don't use acetone and don't use more aggressive solvents than naphtha so these parts for cleaning and then they can be reassembled cleaning these components I'm just using some naphtha cigarette lighter fluid on a cotton bud for a q-tip to you Americans and I just want to lift off any old grease which is dried out and any freight of dust that it might be carrying just using a wooden toothpick to run around that groove to make sure that everything is loose and coming away nicely that looks fine and I'm cleaning the rest of the body of this piece too at the front this lens is quite clean it's not uncommon for there to be a fair bit of dust and dirt in places like this that piece is good turn my attention to this piece to so the front face clean that, that grease is uh, sort of well in, ingrained really there that, see if we can get that off Some of the dirty marks here will be the grease and hopefully that will clean away. Some of the dirty marks may actually be wear marks in the metal and they will probably remain. This was at, this component is aluminium, it's uh, anodized. Anodized aluminium has a very hard surface. being careful not to damage that spring it's not the most friction free surface however with aluminium it's uh, and on the inside I'm cleaning around that plastic component carefully And in this case there's not an awful lot else needs cleaned in there because that's all very tidy. Bring back my little pieces. And these components I'll reassemble. So I'll start with a little bit of molybdenum paste and in that groove on the lens or on the uh, focus mount here I'll just run some around that groove it doesn't need much and I'm going to run some on this flat face here too because I suspect that's 
it's been rubbing on the mount that should be sufficient now to get this all back together things to note this is your focus register if you like that must be somewhere on the focus scale not really on the other side where it's blank or this isn't going to go together somewhere on the focus scale where there are numbers so I'll get my thing sitting in the correct position somewhere on there I'll get it hooked in under on this side and peel back that plastic piece both sides I should be able to get this to drop into place there it is it dropped into place so that's all in place now oops get back in there you I'm checking that for feel to see how it feels how smooth it runs and I can't say I'm very impressed no it seems to be moving smoothly now all right let's get these little pieces back into position and that'll go much smoother if I've got my good tweezers I have lots of pairs of tweezers but only one that I count as my good tweezers they're nice and sharp small tips ideal for delicate work now these little pieces of brass these clamp plates as I said they've got a uh, recess on one side which fits over this plastic piece I'll we'll just get this one in place with its screw turn that round so you might be able to see it get that screw started get that brass plate down in position and squared up I haven't tightened that screw up I've just got everything in position now it's mates of course I want to do this facing the other way you won't be able to see it if I do that so we'll do it this way that was a clever trick just lost that screw let's see if I can encourage it back out now oh, there it is Again, I haven't done that screw up tight. And the fourth of our little brass clamps. Now these tweezers are sticky. run that screw down lightly as well I'm checking the action here to see if it's smooth and it is so first of all 
What we're concerned with here is making sure that it's smooth in motion and that there's no rattle. If there's rattle when you stress these parts, it means that they're too loose, that the clamps need to be pushed in slightly. We're taking this as our fixed position, the spring post one, and I'm just going to tighten down the clamp on the screw opposite that. I've pushed that brass clamp in snug, tighten that down and check the action. That's still good and smooth, that's nice. Now the other two, I'll do the same. That's good. That's what's wanted, and there's no rattle. So that's just a nice... Uh, Smooth action, there's some resistance there, um, it's quite smooth, quite controlled, that's quite good. I'll move that spring back out of the way slightly, so I don't damage it. It's doing its best to cause me trouble. All these components I'll be cleaning with naphtha. And I'm most interested in removing any old grease that's on here and any dirt and dust with it. You can see from the state of the cotton bud here that that component is actually quite clean, not much came off there. I'll just clean a couple more of these components. This is the separator that uh, keeps the two pointers which counter rotate from rubbing on each other. I notice it's got some corrosion on it. That can create some roughness. I'm just checking that and running a screwdriver over that to see if it feels rough. I'm trying to find out whether the one of the pointers would have trouble moving over that surface. It just appears to be more discoloration than anything else. There's no um, pressing need to do anything dramatic with that. That's our first two components. We have this little cam, which is nylon by the looks of it. Um, probably fairly delicate, I don't want to damage that. And the second pointer. Again, I'll just swab that down and these parts are all very very clean that's fairly uncommon start putting this together so here's our first pointer now there are two positions these run in here and here obviously this has got the hook on it facing this way so it sits in here, let me get that spring pulled back, it should sit in there, drop over the tube and drops down to the lower gear here. That spring I can hook over its post, that was very unreasonably easy. This separator, it's not symmetrical as you can see. It's got a little tab on it which engages with a notch in the fence here somewhere. That plastic fence it engages with a notch in there. The cutaway bit, here you can see this cutaway here, that runs past those gears. So with a notch into there, make sure the spring is not trapped underneath that ring. That's better. And that's that component. Yeah, a little brass uh, nylon cam runs in a crescent shaped groove down in here. I'm just running a little tiny wipe of molybdenum paste down there. And our cam should sit in there 
something like that. Our second depth of field pointer. This drops in into the second position, which in this case is over here. Two things I've got to do here. I've got to couple that with this nylon cam so that, that pin comes through it. I need to make sure that these two pointers are timed correctly so that they're both up against their stops heading out that way. It appears to be the case. Making sure that the spring hasn't popped out of place or anything else. No, that all looks good. This is um, going together extremely well. There's bound to be some hitch to catch me. So I'll clean this component. This is the control ring. Operated from the back of the camera, from the camera body. This has a pin on it. That pin has to engage in that hole on that nylon cam. The spring needs to be rotated and hooked over that post, that pin that the other spring is on. In that black plastic fence, this spring runs around the outside of that black plastic fence. Now it's about ready to stage where we can uh, put the last two pieces on and then clean the rear piece. Here you can see these little screws. They're ones I've um, made just to help with this job. Basically they were longer screws and all I've done is grind down the heads on them uh, so that they, I can slide this lens together over the top of them. I'll show you how that's used. 